Well, hello and welcome. I am Rufus Rumplebutt, and you're in for another riveting episode of Five Questions. <sighs> yeah, this thing's hot. I'm oh, sorry, y'all ladies do this. Sheesh. All right, yeah, this ain't gonna work. Play back. Oh, all right. Whew. That's better. Sheesh. It's burning up in that thing. <laughs> um. All right, so I'm back. I'm Dorian Christian. I'm playing the role of Quincy and Pandemically Single. So how hard was it for me to record myself? Um, actually, it's not that hard. Um, this day and age with everything kind of changing, especially even before COVID, you've kind of had to get into the habit of doing self-auditions and self-recorders and things like that. So over this period of time, I actually I think I've gotten pretty good at it as you can see right here. Um, <laughs> but for the most part, it's just kind of really just finding areas. Um, you wanna have nice backgrounds. This doesn't count. <laughs> nice backgrounds. Um, trying to figure out your angles, your lightings and everything like that. I'm even going to YouTube to pull up some kind of in-depth tutorials as much as I can without getting too deep. But um, for the most part, I think I had it. I, th I think I do pretty good with it. I like to fashion myself as an artiste, uh, auteur, if you will. Yeah, yeah um, what do I think about this concept, um, pandemically single? I think it's pretty good. Um, in this day and age, as everything is pretty much online um, and virtual, to so to speak, it lends itself to being very topical. But at the same time, with the pandemic kind of being injected into what we've already have accepted as regular online dating, injecting the idea of the pandemic and everything, like, everything like that, it really is kind of ripe for comedy. It's like wide open. It's a lot of things in there you can find, a lot of comedic beats, and just weird situations that we have never had to consider before. But now we have to start to think about that now, like um. Um, like in um, one scene where I'm meeting um, a, a woman where she has a mask on and you know it's a situation where I ask her to pull her your ma put, pull your mask down for a second because I want to see your full face you know it's like that's a new concept now you know you're out looking at people like well the eyes are kind of nice but what's just below that 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 break line what's below that mask right there you don't know what you're kind of getting but um the concept yeah, it definitely lends itself to a lot of you know, things that can be kind of explored and made fun of for the most part as we all try to navigate this uh, new normal, to use a tired cliche right now, but it is what it is. But yeah, I love the concept and I I can't wait to see what else happens after this, you know, what more they can do with it. Well, what more we can do with it. You know, hopefully they keep me on. You know, we're still negotiating contracts. But How am I coping with the pandemic? Wow. Am I? <laughs> I mean, really, it's... Ugh. I'm just day by day, honestly. Just staying safe and you know, trying to take over the precautions and listening to just good advice, you know, social distancing, masks, and things like that, even with close friends and family. Um, it's been a lot of binging. A lot of binging. Like, old shows. I mean, old shows I should have been watched back in like 1995. Um, up until now, um, binging movies, reading, um, definitely still staying fit, going out, uh, working out, riding a bike, going to the park, doing what I can do, just kind of stay active. Um, I think that's pretty, pretty much it. One way I am kind of coping as well, it's not a good way to cope, so don't, please don't take my advice on this. But I've kind of developed a little bit of a sneaker habit. Um, a whole bunch of sneakers that I really have nowhere to wear them. But they look nice in my closet right now. Um, as you can see, one pair here. The exquisite. No, let me stop. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, I'm going to kind of sneak. Look at that. So wait, the yellow stripe on the inside. Yeah, it's nice. All right. But, um, so that, that's one bad habit I've picked up. <laughs> um, watching, well not, well, going through this pandemic thing. But other than that, um, definitely staying close with family and friends, reaching out to them as much as possible, doing Zoom chats when, when um, possible, even getting together, you know, all again, social distancing, 
but getting together, just staying reconnected, because I don't think overall we've taken human interaction for granted. I wouldn't go that so far as to that, but I don't think we never knew how fleeting it could be until we got thrust in a situation like this. So what do I like about my character, Quincy? Um, I don't know. I think like might be a bit of a strong word. Um, but no, um, I, I like I like the character Quincy. I think he's a reflection of not only myself, you know, a very real reflection of myself, um, but of a lot of lot of lot of young men, a lot, lot of young black men, especially. Um, I see a lot of similarities in not only the way he approaches things, the way he approaches life, the way he approaches dating, <laughs> and this pandemic in particular. And um, you know, it's a lot of beats that have gone on in my life that I find in his, you know, going to an HBCU, being a young professional, being a single guy, just trying to, you know, navigate not only the dating world, but now this pandemic, you know, this pandemic dating world. Um, yeah, you know, he, he's, he's confident, you know, he knows what he wants, but also too, he, he's not too much, you know, he, he doesn't exude that, you know, that smooth, you know, Keith Washington, Sexiness, but I don't ask me why I think Keith Washington. <laughs> but he doesn't exude that type. No, he has a certain level of awkwardness to him, a certain level of shyness in um, certain situations, and also you no know, clumsiness. You know, if you put him in the wrong situation, and yeah, that's all me. So that's very easy to kind of get into that character and just really bring him to the forefront and do some fun things with it. You know, I, hey, I hope, hope y'all like what y'all see when, he, when he's out there because Quincy is. um. He's a bit of a character. He's interesting. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, if Quincy was real, I could definitely see us hanging, hitting the streets, getting some drinks, and, you know, howling at the ladies. Yeah. Um, one interesting fact about me, let's see. I mean, really. I mean, what more do you need? I mean, come on. Put this on. All right, um, one interesting fact. All right, let me stop playing, get this over with. Um, one interesting fact, interesting fact about me, uh, I hate musicals. I don't like musicals. I don't like musical movies. However, I love Grease. <laughs> I love Grease. Like, that is my jam, like, straight off from, you know, Summer Nights, um, you know, Grease Lightning, all of that, man. That that that's my movie. And by <laughs> total admission, with no guilt whatsoever, I love Grease 2. I don't care what nobody says. Grease 2 is my jam. Look, all right, so hear me out real quick. Now Grease 1 is the better one. But I, I can't say by far, but most people love Grease 1. Cool. That's fine. I won't argue argue that point too much. And although I love Grease 1. I think Grease 2 might be a little bit better. Just a little bit. Or just on the strength of, if nothing else, the songs. Don't Sleep, Grease 2 got some songs in there. I mean, you got Reproduction, you got Going Prowling, when you actually listen to those lyrics for the Prowling seg um, segment of that, that movie. It's kind of wild. <laughs> um, you got um, Girl for All Season, you got Cool Rider with Michelle Pfeiffer. Come on. No more do you need. So that's it. Yeah. So I hate musicals, but Grease 1 and Grease 2 are my jams. So. And I'm out.